Hello again, it's Lenny from RTB Models and working closely with Frontline Model Hobbies, I bring you this. Yes, it is the Zuckamori 148 scale mm, F4 EJ Phantom 2. Yes, and it is in the Phantom Forever livery. So this video is going to be concentrating solely on the cockpit. That's it. Now, what I will say is um, the cockpit detail and the parts are quite comprehensive there's a bit of them uh, and as you can see now i'm just looking at the instructions and basically it's sort of like yeah it's straightforward but there are a lot of parts and if you're not used to these instructions then just make sure you do a good read over first before you start so anyway there i am going through the cockpit bits and all the rest of it and pretty much we're going to go straight solid on onto the parts now with the parts, I've taken them off the sprues as you can see, and I've cleaned them all up. And I'm just gonna give you a quick overview now of the detail of the parts. Now, they are very good. However, the only drawback at the moment with this kit is the fact that you don't get any um, seat harnesses, maybe in photo etch, and the decals for the instrument panels are a bit weak. But apart from that, you cannot fault the detail of this kit. Now, the entire thing there, cockpit wise, you're looking at 42 separate parts. Okay, like I normally do, um, I'm priming all the parts and I'm using again, the Tamiya XF24, which is a dark gray. Um, I quite like this um, because I can use this particular shade of gray to use it for shadowing. Now, I'm not going to bore you with priming absolutely everything, so let's move on to a bit of white. So, with the actual uh, undercarriage bay, the front one being, um, here I'm just using uh, Hataka's um, Traffic White, as in the uh, lacquer base uh, paint, should I say. And basically, I'm just filling in um, small bits of the actual panels within the undercarriage bay. So, really, what I can do is, is keep doing that for a few times, and then I can just build up the paint, and as you'll see, I'll get some shadows. So if you are wondering, uh, and you're probably not, um, why I use a dark gray instead of like a black or any other um, sort of like primer, I basically use this because I just find it a lot easier to manipulate the actual paint itself or the base color that I'm going to be using. Obviously I'm using white, but you can basically use this to any color um, and use it to your advantage. And you just do get some really, really nice shadowing effects if you so wish it to be a bit shadowy. Okay, so carrying on again with the white and we're just applying a little bit more paint as in the amount of actually onto the kit part. And slowly but surely what you also get is, is that shadowing effect between the actual, let's say, structure of the actual undercarriage bay. So again, you're just going along, going along, and then what you do is once you're happy with the paint that you've got, you can just go over it with light coats until you're happy with your result. Okay, then moving on from white to another exciting color, black. Anyway, what we're doing is I'm just using again, Hataka Paints, uh, it is the night black, um, and I'm just spraying it over the actual uh, top part of the cockpit. Uh, again, um, what you can do before you commit to paint on the ejector seats is pretty much put them together. But what I haven't done is um, obviously glued the um, seat cushions and the back cushions onto it as they can be painted separately because they're a different color. Anyway, instrument panels, uh, again, very nicely detailed and again, just going over with black. Now, what I'll do is later in this video, I'll just show you how I get the gray demarcation between 
all of the instrument bezels. Okay then, now just moving on to finishing the front undercarriage bay. I've painted all the circuit boxes uh, a black grey uh, from Vallejo. And once you've done that and everything's dry and you're happy, you can start putting it together. Now it is a one, two, three, four, five part affair at the counter um, to actually stick it all together. Um, it's, it's very self-explanatory. I don't really have to go the ins and outs of a badger's ass to actually go through everything with you. But it is a very, very easy fit. And once it's together, it's a very, very solid piece of the kit. So there you go, there's the front and the carriage uh, bay, all done up, all glued in and all secure. And for something straight out of the box, I think it looks pretty damn good. So, moving on to the cockpit tub then. Right, now same thing, uh, obviously I've got the dark grey as a primer. And I've gone straight in with a dark sea grey. Um, again, from Attacker's Lacquer Range. So again, I'm just pointing out little bits and pieces. Um, getting that shadowing effect with the actual um, primer coat and again i've got the firewall there and again it's the same principle what i'll be doing here now that i was doing on the front undercarriage bay just gently loading it up with the paint in the sort of like the segments of the actual kit part and just going along and once i've done it once i've done once i'm happy with it i can give it a once over or a couple of once overs with a lighter coat. So once everything was dry, what I've done is I've gone back um, with the dark sea grey, but I've added a few drops of white to the actual paint. Now I've blown it through, so I've, obviously I'm getting the different shade of grey, and basically now all I'm doing is highlighting it with the airbrush, as in the top parts. Now, as I'm happy, I can go further on and go on to dry brush in. Yay! And this I'm using another brush or a new one. It's fantastic. Yes. Good that, isn't it? Yeah, I'm really happy with that result, Lenny. Yeah, bro. Yeah. Um, oh, um, not bollocks. Yeah, stick to the brushes, Lenny, that you know you can work with. Excellent, back to all faithful. Now, again, all I'm doing is I'm using Tamiya's XF19, which is sky grey, to basically just go over basically all of the raised parts of the actual cockpit. And now I can just show you now is the front instrument panel, and it comes up really, really nicely. And that's just the first part of it. But, and again, like I said, everything is a dry brush. And again, it just brings out just the edges um, some of the flooring, although you won't really see too much of it, but it just gives it that little bit of a difference. Okay, then moving over to the side console panels, whatever. Now, as you can see, I am actually brush painting uh, and I'm using a Vallejo black grey uh, and I'll use this on my wet palette. Now, like I said before, the decals uh, for these are a bit weak. Um, so this is why I've opted for this option. Yeah. Anyway, it is a nice way to get back to the old basics using the old brush and basically getting a really nice result because you don't get any sort of like brush marks of the actual paintbrush while you're doing it. So again, just going over it and marveling at your own sort of like fantasticness. And yeah, shut up Lenny. Okay, just the last thing for me um, about doing this, um, when you actually are doing painting like this, try and give yourself enough time to actually do it um, at your leisure, as it were. Don't rush it. And also, when you're actually using the Vallejo paints and all the rest of it, try and water them down quite a lot, just to give yourself a, a nice sort of like finished texture. And there you go. Those are the uh, side panels. 
I'm really happy with them and hopefully they'll stay in focus. And it just gives you that really nice finish. Okay, the next bit is detailing things up. And for this, I'm using the Tamiya Paint Retarder and XF19 Sky Grey. Now, I mix it up um, so it is quite thin. And you'll see why right now. Because basically, I load up the paintbrush and I'm just tapping the actual instrument panel and letting the actual Sky Grey paint go around all the instrument dials and bezels on its own free will. Basically, it's just like the tap and flow movement. And I'll do that a few times, maybe three or four, maybe more, just so I get that good coverage over with the actual Sky Grey. And you just want to make sure that you are taking your time when you're doing it. I'm pretty sure there's other ways you could do it. They're a lot easier, but I just find that I get a nicer finish um, using this actual method. And there you go, that's the, well, the finished top part of it. Um, yeah, really happy with that. Uh, and I got some nice sort of like demarcation between the actual black and gray. So basically now I'm gonna go on to using a panel line wash. As you can see, it's from Mig Ammo. And I'm basically gonna go through and just basically soak, first of all, the actual side panels of the cockpit. Now, once that's dry, what I do is I'll go over it with a sort of like clean, stiff brush. And then what I do is I'll carry on with a bit more of the detail part of the panel line wash. Is I basically load up a smaller brush and I go around with the actual um, panels or the demarcation uh, between each of the panels. Um, so it does actually, um, well, yeah, make them a bit more prominent, as it were. Anyway. Yeah, I'll do that for the whole thing and including the actual parts of the cockpit. Now, what I've done is, as it was all finished and I was happy, I basically glued on what I can, which is the instrument sort of like side consoles and the throttle quadrants and the other bits and pieces for the Rio, which I'm just showing you right now. Everything went in absolutely fine and yeah, absolutely no issues whatsoever. Right then, so now I'm a happy camper. Mm, let's move on to the pilot's instrument panel. Now that's pretty much all done. Um, I've just got a couple more things to do, which I'm gonna show you right now. Right, clear orange and crystal clear. Now what I'm gonna do is just show you how I do like the um, radar scopes um, and all that kind of stuff within the cockpit. Now all I do is get a cocktail stick, a cleanish, um, sort of like cup get a couple of blobs of the old crystal clear and just wipe them on the top and then proceed to go and grab the clear orange come on all right there you go ah, nice one Lenny right switch on right so all you do is get a couple of blobs of the actual paint and just stir it into the PVA now again you can just do this as many times as you want well, and so you feel like you can get the correct colour. Now, all you do is get a blob of it and you very carefully stick it into the aperture of where it needs to be. Now, point to note, um, if you want the orange to be quite prominent, as in like, a, you know, orange, then have a lighter base behind it. Now, the reason why I painted it black is thus. In the reference pictures, you'll see that it is quite dark. Now, that's what I've gone for, because it's not on, as in, it's not switched on, if you get what I drift. Anyway, now what I've done is, with this one, I've kept it actually grey with inside the actual LCD panel, as it were. So when it dries, it's going to be a lot lighter than everything else. Again, it's just something else in the cockpit, among much of the grey, just to give it a bit more of, I don't know, colour. And there you go. Now, all I'm going to do now is basically just put some of the crystal clear and just dip it onto where the actual uh, instruments are. And it just gives you that sort of like glass look um, within the cockpit. And once you look into the cockpit, once it's all dry, you can see it and it's very, very noticeable. So 
yeah, it's well worth the actual time to do it properly. So anyway, here we go. It's me just putting in the circuit breaker switches on uh, the Rio site. And again, it's just you just plug it in, glue it, and as your father, no problem. Now, oh yeah, the actual Rio's um, instrument paddle. Now, just be a bit careful with this because it is a bit of a <clears throat> struggle uh, to actually get it in. Not too much, but just be careful because what you don't want to do is bend and break a the actual instrument panel and the actual top part of the fuselage. But there you go, it's all in, all nice and tight. And I did put a couple of drops of glue just to make sure it was secure. Okay, just the final bits to pop in now. Um, and basically all I'm doing now is just putting a very small spot of glue and putting that small little um, screen uh, and the Rio section onto the actual aperture or the anchor point as it were. Again, it's a nice fit, um, but what I would do is, is test fit the actual instrument panel first before you actually put that in, just to make sure you've got clearance. Because if you don't, there is a possibility that you might actually hit it and it will come off. Anyway, a little bit more dry brushing, just to make sure um, I've got all the bits of the, the switches and knobs and all that kind of business all sorted out. And all I do then is just go over reference pictures and just add on a couple of drops of the old yellow and red where applicable. Now, the very last bit now is just securing the Rio's instrument panel along with the top part of the fuselage. And again, it's very, very easy to do. All you gotta do is just make sure you follow the instructions and yeah, you just pop it in. So there you go, nicely done, all in, no dramas. So there you go, just a very quick look at the finished uh, cockpit. Again, it was amazing, it was really good. So anyway, enough of me, I'm off. So take care, happy modeling, stay safe, and enjoy yourself. See ya.